I want everybody to recite after me. Uh, repeat it. I am an artist. I am an artist. If you're turning wood, if you're dealing with anything that you're making, uh, it's an artist. Now, you may not be at the point of being a professional artist, but you are an artist. Uh, you know, it's a journey. It's, I'll, I'll never get there. Uh, to give you a little bit about uh, my background, I'm a professional cabinet maker and furniture maker. Uh, I lived in North Carolina in a little town called Newburn. Uh, I've, I've done work for the governor of North Carolina, made some furniture for her. Uh, I've actually worked on, uh, I don't know if you know what a Hatteras yacht is. They're big luxury yachts, 70, 80, 100 foot. Uh, I worked on those uh, several years of my youth. And, and the thing about working on a Hatteras yacht, uh, and you were dealing with teak and exotic woods, is whenever you put a screw in, in, in uh, into the piece of wood, you have to recess it. And then you take and, and get a wooden plug of the same wood species, and you put it in there to cover up that screw. But the grain direction of the plug has to match the grain direction of the wood. So you had to, I mean, you had to be very meticulous to get that like that. Uh, so, you know, I've, I've, I've had that experience uh, for almost 50 years now. I was thinking driving over here how long, I, you know, I've done that. Uh, I'm also an ordained minister. Uh, so, you know, I don't want no swearing or cussing in the class today. Uh, I'm, I'm married. I've got uh, seven children. They're all grown. Uh, I've got five grandchildren, and I've got three great-grandchildren. And I started bowl turning two years ago, and I thought, I'll never get it. It wasn't like making furniture. It wasn't like making cabinets. It was completely different. Here's my first bowl. My wife won't let me throw it away. Uh, if you want to throw it away, you can. But she keeps it to remind me that, you know, don't, don't get yourself so big that you're, you'll be, you feel like you're beyond where you are. Anyway, we're here today to talk about the art of embellishing wood. And you know, you start looking on the internet. I, I joined the AEW uh, almost two years ago, and I have scoured all the, all the articles, all the videos to learn. Uh, uh, Gary Lowe, I don't know if any of you know Gary Lowe uh, from, from, uh, from England. Uh, you know, I've, I've looked at his things. Uh, Mike Peace out of Atlanta, I've looked at his things. I mean, the names could go on of people that I've looked at, uh, and the reason that I look at their uh, Facebook page uh, is so that I can learn from them uh, and see things that they've made that we don't do here. Uh, and today's not about teaching you how to turn anything. I'm not going to teach you how to turn a piece of wood. Uh, hopefully you know how to do it, uh, and if not, learn how to do it. It's all about practice, practice, practice. You know, I'm retired now. Uh, I traveled in, in the last several years, eight years or so, as a manufacturer's rep, covering five states selling kitchen cabinets to dealers and distributors. Well, I've been retired since January, and my life now, besides serving the Lord, is in the shop every day, uh, working on the lathe or experimenting. I love to sit there, and I, I get no more. I get more joy out of sitting there with colors. Saying, well, if I mix this and this, what do I get? Or if I take that elf tool and put it over here, what do I, how can I do it? So I'm experimenting, learning how, for, for me, how to use it. Anyway, let's get started. I, I don't need to ramble on. You know, as a minister, sometimes you, you just keep on talking. So we'll just, we'll go forward. Uh, <laughs> wood turners are artists. Uh, the, all those pictures are not mine. They're some of yours uh, that we see up there. And, and, you know, and they're, they're, all these are art. Each one of those has got, you know, an element of art into it. Uh, in, embellish. It means to heighten the attractiveness by adding a decorative or fanciful detail to make beautiful with ornamentation, to adorn, to decorate, beautified garnish. means to enhance the appearance of something by adding something unessential. I told my wife that last Sunday when we were going to church, I said, are you embellishing yourself? <laughs> and Sunday afternoon wasn't very good for me. <laughs> uh, but, that, that, but it's true. I mean, you know, we do. I mean, we even dress up trying to look our best. You know, when I was courting her uh, uh, 45 years ago, you know, I'd get, I'd get dressed up, a nice shirt. I'd make sure I had cologne on, smell good, get my hair brushed down. I'd do all that. I'd embellish myself you know, as much as I could. Uh, but now... 
you know, not so much. Uh, <laughs> you know, when I when I got home yesterday before we went out to dinner, she said, uh, "You smell like wood." I said, "Isn't it beautiful?" <laughs> because I have a grandson uh, that uh, he always picks on. He's fourteen now, and he uh, every time we'd go into Lowe's. I'd walk over there, I'd always go into the contractor side of Lowe's, and I'd go there and go, like that. He said, Grandpa, quit smelling the wood, because <laughs> uh, I love the smell of wood. Uh, anyway, it's anything that adds design interest to a piece, just like something like this. Uh, just design interest up here, where you, I don't, you can't see that. Let's see. Yeah, should be able to. Uh, <clears throat> There we go. You know, yeah. anything that has design interest to a piece. Uh, not every piece, and I will say this, not every piece that you make has to has to have something on it. Uh, here's a piece of cherry. Now, the design interest uh, is nothing more uh, than this edge here, the live edge. Uh, that's a piece of cherry that I turned. I guess probably eight months ago, and I didn't I didn't add anything to it, and it stands alone by itself. But see, the form also is a design interest. It's not just the wood, but the form of it, the shape of it, uh, can be the design interest. Uh, types of wood embellishment: uh, you have coloring, uh, texturing, and inlays. Have all of you used those those various aspects? Uh, so you have the coloring. Coloring is nothing more than using uh, a paint, uh, an iridescent paint, uh, dyes, and you'll see some of or those. A torch. Just, huh? Or a torch. Or a torch. I mean, that's what that's what this was done. That was done with a torch. Uh, actually, I brought two torches because uh, I was going to do it yesterday, but they were goofing off not getting done. Uh, they wanted to, to, matter of fact, they wanted to go to lunch at 12 o'clock, and I brought them back. Because they had to finish these vases so that I could paint them so that they could work on them. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> where's my color wheel? Should be right over there. Yeah. If you don't have one of these, uh, I highly recommend that you get it for yourself. You know, because you're an artist. Okay? You, you, you're, not just, you're not just a woodworker. You're not doing flat stock. And a color wheel will tell you by adding this shade to it, or that shade, you want to hold it where they can see it? Yeah, well, let's see. Uh, well, it's actually up there. Up yeah. to, it's kind of sort of. Yeah. But you've got three primary colors in pigment. You've got red, you've got green. I'm sorry, you got red, you got yellow, and you have blue. And so to give you an idea of what that looks like, <laughs> when I take this piece right here, which was a vase, but it's not a very shapely vase, uh, I've got yellow. I've got blue and I've got red. Well, red and blue make what? Purple. Uh, blue and yellow make what? Green. Green. Uh, yellow and red make what? Orange. So you can mix those colors. And all the colors that you look there, uh, you've got your primary colors, your secondary colors, which are the ones I just spoke about. Then you have your tertiary colors, which are a mix of that. Uh, so it's very valuable to have one of those color wheels as you start exploring color. Cause, and, and, and if you want to, let's say you've got too much blue. Well, how do, you, how do you cancel out blue? Well, what you do is you go directly across and you pick the color directly across from blue. And that'll, that'll, that'll bring down that blue tone. Uh, so that's how, you, that's how you work with color in that aspect. Uh, this color wheel that I have here is by the Mohawk Company. I'm sure many of you have heard of Mohawk. Uh, and it's got, the, again, the primary colors and the secondary colors. And it shows you by adding uh, these different colors to it, it gives you what percentage it'll do. So you're able to go in there and really fine tune where you want to be in a, you know, in a color uh, that you're working with. And if I'm going too fast, just tell me to slow down. Color. You have paints, uh, acrylic paints I use. You have stains, uh, and we've got stains over there on the table, and you have dyes. <coughs> uh, I gave a sheet out, and I've got a, a few of the sheets up here 
I don't know that I have enough for everybody. Tom, um, I, I can send out PDFs if people want. All right. Uh, and it talks about what, what we've used in the class yesterday. Because we tried to use everything that's here uh, in the class. Uh, in the dyes, you have water-based dyes. Uh, well, we'll just go to the next slide. Here we go. Tom, back up a minute. What is the basic difference that you're finding between stains and dyes? What's the difference? Yeah, what was well, one, 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 the advantage one over the other. Uh, well, with dyes, I end up you with dyes. I try to use alcohol-based dyes, and the reason why, as opposed to water-based, uh, and the reason why is that the alcohol will flash off, and it'll leave the color on there. Uh, where if you use a water-based dye, you've got to wait for that to dry, uh, and and I don't like to infuse more water uh, into a piece of wood. Because, uh, you know, a, a piece of wood is nothing but a sponge. Uh, it's made up of cells uh, that hold wood. I mean, yesterday when we had the dinner, uh, there was a piece of wood there that was about that long that felt like it was about three or four times heavier than it would be if it would, had been kiln dried. And that's because it was loaded with, with water. Uh, and for us to turn a piece of wood that's wet, you've got to do a couple of things. You've either got to turn it to its final size uh, hoping that what's left will will evaporate and not sh change the shape, or you've got to leave it 10% uh, of the wall thickness because it's going to distort. Whenever you turn a wet piece, uh, it's going to distort, so you have to leave room to come back and clean that back out. Is that right? right. I did read the right article. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and paints, you know, like I did up here with the uh, the tulips, uh, and I learned that from, I think, from Dave uh, over there. Uh, you know, I'm, I, I tried that, and, and they're painted with nothing but the uh, but acrylic paint. Uh, just sprayed it on there, uh, and then took the little stems and whatnot. And, and a lot of stuff that I do, it's, it's trial and error or mistakes that I'm trying to fix. Because when you look at this vase, and it's not the most shapely vase, but you see that red at the bottom. Well, the whole thing was red. I stained it red, and I didn't like it. So I'm thinking, well, how do I fix it? Because it was for my mother-in-law. <laughs> you know, and you got to fix it. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> to fix it. Well, I ended up taking, I don't have the vase here. It's, it's in North Carolina. I took the vase, had it on the lathe, and, and I took my skew, and I went, and, and that's done with the Wagner tool. You can't see it, but that's done with the Wagner tool. I took my skew below there and cut it away. And took it above there and then used other tools to, to finish it uh, and left that, that band proud sticking out beyond the base. Uh, and then I was able to just then finish that thing natural because I'd used a, uh, just a regular stain off, you know, that you get from Lowe's. And it, was, it wasn't a, a penetrating stain. So I was able to clean it up. But if I hadn't had that mistake, I'd have never found out how to do that. <laughs> and again, it was just, my, you know, in the workshop, trial and error on that. Uh, paints, you have acrylic paints, you have oil-based paints, you have water-based paints uh, that are available. Uh, I, I particularly, uh, you know, I, I like the, uh, the acrylic paints. Uh, they seem to work well. I don't use them a lot. Uh, when I take a piece like this uh, that I made, and I did this with fire, uh, I ended up putting green in here, then using iridescent paint on top of it. And you can pass this around. If you look at it, you'll end up seeing, if you hold it in an angle, you'll see the, uh, the green and you'll see the blue uh, and, you know, as you look around the piece. Uh, dyes, you have alcohol or aniline dyes and water-based dyes. And over on the table there, I've got some of both of them. Uh, Mantool sells uh, a dye here, which I have used uh, on some of the products we've got. Uh, matter of fact, on this one right here, and in the kits that I gave away to the uh, to the folks uh, yesterday, uh, I had a kit that I gave everybody a little bag. This is what everybody got yesterday. That's how we started. Uh, and inside the bag, uh, I gave them. I came to Man Tool about three months ago and said, "I need a depth gauge. I need to know how deep something is." They didn't have anything. So I went home and I made me 
my own little personal death cage. And so now it'll fit whatever size it'll work on. I just put on there one inch, two inch, three inch, four inch, and half inch increments. And now I can tell the depth of something instead of having a little something real small. And so I gave, gave the guys that. I also made them a pencil with a magnet on it and gave that to them. Because ha have you ever fumbled around looking for your pencil when you're at the lathe? You know, I bought, I, bought, I bought a little pack of 10 of those here at Man Tool and took it home and took hot melt and put it on there. Now when the pencil's done, I'll pull it off, hot melt it on another piece. And I'm good to go. So you can put it anywhere you want to on the lathe, and it's going to sit there, right ready to use. Uh, I must have pushed the button. I'm just going to see about Texturing is the process of changing the surface feature uh, to add a decorative element. This piece right here that I'll pass around. On the back of it, you'll, you'll see uh, Sorby's tool being used. Uh, you'll also see the band that I used, the Wagner tool on there. And what you'll also see is this is a colored wax uh, that's available. I've got uh, four different colors over there. And I found it by accident over at Hobby Lobby. I was walking through the aisles looking at paints and stuff. Just, you know, it's, it's kind of like going to Lowe's dreaming. Well, I was walking down the aisle just dreaming. What could, what's here? What, what have they got? And I saw that and I opened the can and I touched it and I thought, wow, that would work. Uh, so, you know, I, I brought the colors home. So here, and th now this is CA finish. That's all it is. That's just CA finish on, on this whole thing. And it's going back again to the start. I got to quit moving this. Okay. So you can use any, when we're talking about texturing, you can use any tool. You could use a nail. Uh, you could use a, a, a well, soldering, soldering. Soldering. Yeah. Uh, a, a chisel. I mean, anything that you want to put it, even up to a nail. Uh, and like I say, I did this with a side grinder, uh, cutting that. I saw, I saw a picture of it online and thought, I can do that. Uh, so I got the piece, you know, I got a piece, I turned it, uh, and ended up taking, and I'm thinking, well, how would I do this? So I went over there and I just started, I burned it first. I took and burned it. Then I took my pencil and marked lines on there to see how I would like it. Uh, and I took the side grinder just sitting there at the thing and I just went around and turned it and, uh, you know, that's what I ended up with. So any tool that you, a nail set, uh, I do leather work a little bit. And I've got some of the leather leather tools. Well, that's coming. I'm going to get I'm going to get it in the shop, and I'm going to try to create some kind of a stipple effect around the edge. Texturing tools. You got Sorby. You got Wagner. You got Elf tool. You got a Chatter tool. Any tool, any shop uh, shop tool can be a texturing tool. Uh, the thing I, that I thought about this morning that I want to tell you is Sorby cuts wood. Okay, the Sorby tool cuts wood, and the reason I say that, I want you to realize this: you have to be careful on the different woods. The softer the wood, the the more damage, the more tear out you're going to have. Uh, so you can use them. You can use Sorby, either the larger, small, or softer woods. But you can't just go in there like you would on a piece of oak or something that's you know a, a good hardwood. You don't do on a fork. You have to go real light on your cuts. Uh, the uh, the Widener tool does not cut. The Widener tool, all it does is dent. Uh, so the harder woods, you're going to have to push a little harder with the Widener tool. Uh, and if you got a Widener tool, you have to make sure that you oil that thing because there's no, there's no bearing. So you have to put a little bit of, of, of machine oil, something like that, just to lubricate it a little bit. Uh, the Elf tool, which I just got, uh, Dave Phillips, I mean, uh, 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 Dave back there, we talk too much. Uh, he, uh, he told me about this, about this tool, uh, about five, six weeks ago. And uh, he said, it's a, it's a marvelous thing. Well, I ordered it about three weeks ago, and uh, I think it's my best detailing tool that I've got. And you'll see that in a little bit. Can you pass it around? Huh? Can you pass that around? It's no. Pretty, pretty <laughs> you, you may not get it. It's actually got three cutters with it. 
you've got that one, another one that looks like a, a, a little rose. What's the name of it? It's made by Henry Taylor, and it's called the Elf Tool. Henry Taylor is the manufacturer, and it's the Elf Tool. And that was also listed on the uh, sheet. Tom. Yo. There are two versions of that. If you're looking at them to order it, get the more expensive one. It's only about eight or nine dollars between the two, and you get thirty dollars worth of bits on the more expensive. Yeah, I think this. One, I think this was like eighty dollars yeah, for the kit, and you and you get a brush, and it's not a nylon brush. What this is for uh, is designed to take out any little particles that the, when you cut. Uh, so this is horse hair, so it's, it's not going it's not going to get hot. Uh, it's not going to melt or anything. It, it does a great job cleaning up when you're using it. Uh, you and I'll sand. do that. You don't huh? sand when you use the off tools. You use that brush to burnish it. Yep. Um, so you can use anything. I, I told them yesterday, uh, years ago when I had my cabinet shop, we would we'd make some uh, laundry hampers out of wood. And what we'd end up doing is we wanted to put a little design on it, like a, like a wheat uh, straw. So we'd, we'd take a, a sharp knife, and we'd make a, a line straight up, then we'd make a couple of lines like that, and then we'd take a Phillips head screwdriver, and we'd go right there, uh, right there at the line, and we'd put it in an angle, take a hammer, and tap it. Uh, and what it would do is it would leave the impression to look like a, 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 a little wheat leaf. And you just alternate it going down like that. Uh, so you can use any tool that you got, any you know, screwdriver, anything like that, to add, to add decoration to a piece. Inlays. Uh, I'm going to pass this around. Uh, this is called Millifoot that you see here. Uh, it's, a, it's an epoxy putty. Uh, to me, it's one of the greatest things that are available uh, for an inlay of this of this type, um, these were four, three different colors uh, that I that I actually put together individually, uh, and then put them in here as, as little pieces. Uh, Millie put. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. Tom, here's uh, here's one that's dried up that we, I forgot to show you. Here's one that's dried what I want to pass around now is this little bowl that's got pieces of Millie put in it. You can take with Millie put, uh, it'll, it'll withstand 260 degree temperature. It'll stick underwater. Uh, it, it's, it's not that product you see on TV where uh, <laughs> flex off, flex seal, it's not that. Uh, it'll stay with 260 degree temperature. Uh, you can put it on, uh, on a, a glass, metal, wood. Uh, you can put it on a car engine. Uh, it'll stick to anything or to itself. Uh, I actually took this. I'll give you this. Uh, I actually took this piece. This was a leftover piece that I had. It was black. And I drilled it and tapped it. Okay? I drilled it and tapped it put a screw in there. And I don't believe there's a man in here that you get in that screw like there. I don't believe you can pull it out. Uh, you can sand it. You can route it. You can cut it, you can shape it, uh, you can even, as you see that I did there, because it was black, you can paint it. Uh, it comes in five different colors, which are over there on the table. And you turn it, I presume. You want to try to pull it? Oh, you want to show it? No, it was just that. Where do you buy that at? I'll sell it to you for 20 now. Uh, I, bu I buy it from Amazon, is where I get it from. Uh, and here it is on this. And you turn it, right? Huh? It's turnable. Absolutely. It's turnable, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, 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 that's why I, I passed yeah. that one that we did yesterday that I forgot to take home. There's one on the table. This right there. here, which I'll pass around, uh, and, th and this is part of the inlay that we're talking about. It's called JB Weld for wood. You can get it at Lowe's. It comes in a, in a, a, a neutral color, uh, like a light birch or whatever. Well, what I did with this is I had it in the shop, and I thought... Well, now, for inlay work, like you see up here, where they've got this, uh, looks like a gemstone. Uh, have, you ever had a, have you ever had a ball or something that you had a, a, a crack in it and you wanted to fill it, but it was hard to get epoxy resin in there? 
Well, you know, you can take this and you can color it. Don't use liquid coloring. Use powder coloring. Uh, you can color this, and, and some of the coloring that I've got over there on the table came from right here at Man Tool. It's called a, uh, uh, Echo Epoxy. Uh, they have it out there where they have the acrylic resin at. And I just uh, took some powder and colored it, uh, and it, and it become, it'll stick to wood, it'll stick to metal. Uh, so, you know, for filling those little small cracks that, that are an eighth of an inch, you got to have a little bit of depth. It can't be just a surface type thing. It can't be a scratch. It's got to go a little deep to do that. But you can put it on there. The difference between uh, that, uh, the uh, JB Weld, uh, and Mohawk, uh, Mohawk and uh, Milliput. Milliput, thank you. The difference between them is the Milliput, uh, you have about an hour to work. So you can work with it. Uh, the other two, you got about... 15 minutes uh, It'll start getting hot as you go to mix it uh, So you have to work you got you know, you can't have a big volume of it with the Millie put I did those three colors and you have to mix it for five Minutes and then an additional minute each color. So I've taken a whole tube of it uh, And it comes in a kit Like this uh, And unlike the JB weld or the Mohawk it's got its activator built into it. Well, with this product, this comes, this is your color, this is the activator. What you have to do is you take off as much as you want or you use the whole thing. This happens to be black, and you mix that whole thing for five minutes together till there's no, till there's nothing but black. But you have to go for five minutes, because I made an example at, uh, at my shop, and I use white. And the thing about white uh, Millie put is the white and the uh, the color and the activator are both white. Well, I mixed it what I thought was five minutes. Uh, long story short, I put it together on something that's passing around there. And the next day I went back, I was going to uh, uh, take it off, cut it, and the white was still soft. Uh, and what had happened is I had not mixed it long enough for the activator and the color uh, to mix together. Uh, so you have to mix that product for five minutes. Mohawk, the Mohawk product they sell right here, and you can color that just like you can the JB Weld. It's good for it's good for smaller projects. It's good to, uh, like I say, to, to fill that in. And you can put any kind of powdered color you want. You know, if you want green or blue or even even black. Tom, show us the color you're talking about. The powdered color you have over there, please. Well, I mean, we've got. Okay, you know, you can do that. These these came from Hobby Lobby. Now again, I was over there, you know, kind of like we do when we go to Lowe's looking at tools. Uh, don't get any light. Hold on. Uh, I, I saw this. The, these. Uh, Let's see if we can get this. Still doesn't do it. We can pass them around and look at them. What do they call them? Huh? What is it called? Yeah. What they call the name? Pearl X. Pearl X. Yeah, now this stuff here, and I'll pass it around. It's called Echo Pot, uh, Poxy. And it actually comes right, it's right here in the store. Yeah. That's where I bought it. Uh, this stuff here, I was over in uh, uh, Hobby Lobby, and I saw it, and I thought, I like that color. I bet that'll work. Uh, so, I, you know, I, I mean, I, I don't know how much I spent on all these supplies here, but <laughs> it, it was quite a bit. 300. Uh, and it's just a powdered pigment that you can add to uh, your acrylic resin. You can add to any of these products that you've got uh, to color them. Uh, and then I've got Mohawk has got colors. Uh, I mean, anything from red to white to blue to green. Uh, and it's just a powdered pigment that you can add to, to anything. Tom, you say you experiment a lot. Tried using uh, sanding dust from the wood that you're working on as a pigment. I have done that. I have taken that and used CA glue with it uh, and, and mixed it in there. Now I have not done that with uh, with any of these products uh, at, at that point. But you know that's something I will keep in mind and, and give that a try and see how that looks. Hey Tom, what's the shelf life for the uh, 
the different. Uh, I keep I keep the uh, the millet put. I keep it in the refrigerator. Uh, the shelf life is up to a year for millet put. Once you once you break the seal on it, uh, and a year is plenty of time. I mean, you you're going to end up using you know you're going to end up using it. Uh, the other product, you know, they come in containers. This is right out there in the store. You can get it. Uh, it it's uh, it, it's just a natural uh, material. And as you look at it, I don't know if I can show you here. Yeah. So you can't see it. Yeah. Uh, the activator is built right into this with the Mohawk product. So the activator is built right into the center of it. And the same thing for the JB Weld for wood. The activator is built right into the center of it. You know, I think they're pretty much the same product. Uh, probably made in the same planet, truth be known. But uh, you don't have a lot of work time with this. Uh, I, I know that when I put it on, four or five minutes after I, I put it on the wood, you can feel it getting warm. Where the Millie put, you can go back 30 minutes later and still move the product a little bit. Does that one also take five minutes to mix like the other one? No, no, it doesn't. That's a, that's a good question. Uh, the JB Weld or, or the Mohawk does not take five minutes to mix. Uh, you just mix it up till the colors are all the same color before you add any color into it. Uh, and that's only just a matter of two two or three minutes. So it's fairly quick to mix those products up. Uh, and then you mix your colorant with it if you want to color it. Uh, and again, you can do any kind of an iridescent powder that you might have. Uh, and, you know, I've got a bowl that I did the acrylic resin on top, but I didn't bring that. Uh, I mean, I think some of you have already done that and, and know how to do that. Inlay materials, epoxy resin, epoxy putty, JB Weld, Milliput, Mohawk, and there may be others out there. Uh, crushed gemstones, glitter. I mean, I've got a thing up here. I was a fanatic for glitter for a while. Now I've kind of moved away from that. Um, but glitter is something. You, coffee grounds. In the little kit that I gave the guys yesterday, I was going to have them put coffee grounds as an inlay, uh, and I was going to have them use glitter as an inlay, but I thought about it, and I thought, some idiot, I mean, one of the turners <laughs> is, is probably going to get their fingers stuck together, uh, or, or, huh? <laughs> did David say something? No, 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 didn't get his finger stuck. So, so I thought, you know, I'm going to move away from there, and that's when I decided to go with the JB Weld and the uh, uh, Mohawk product. Uh, it, to replace that. So in those kits, they still have it. Uh, thin metal sheets or, or metal powders. And I'm sure there's things out there that I don't even know about at this point that some of you may know, but hopefully one day I'll find it uh, that you can use as an inlay material. But, you know, the thing I like yeah. about uh, the epoxy putties is you can color them. Uh, you can paint them. Uh, so, you know, if you want some kind of a special turquoise color or something like that, Find some powders. I found another thing over here online that I ordered two of them because uh, I figured I'd probably lose one of them. And in the box, there's probably 60 or 70, 50, 60 colors of different things that I could use uh, to color. You know, one of those products up there from gold to uh, light brown. Uh, so this is just some more experiments that I'm going to do to see you know how it will look uh, And maybe I'll you know come up with a with a winner. There's graphite uh, And this is for soaps But it's still it but it's still a, a powder that I can utilize uh, in doing the turnings So I just I, I just enjoy experimenting. I get more fun out of experimenting uh, And seeing what's possible Okay, yesterday here's what we did that was the, the top three was what I was going to demo. Uh, I was going to do this, which is this right here. Uh, this is Millie put here. This is Millie put here, which was the leftover from this. We had coffee grounds and we had glitter around the top, uh, but I canceled out the glitter in that, so we ended up using the other products. Uh, I was going to show them how to airbrush. How many of you got an air compressor in your shop? Near you, everybody. How many of you got an airbrush? But not everybody. Well, I'll tell you what. 
I want to show you today how you can airbrush with that. You don't need an airbrush. You can use this. I brought my own just today. It works better than yours. <laughs> uh, but I will show you how you can airbrush something with this. Uh, not to do the traditional way, but just how you can. Uh, I'm going to demo this in just a few minutes. Uh, we're going to take a vase and do that to it. Uh, I, I told the guys these were required up here uh, to make that, to make that, and to do that. And these were optional. They could have done uh, this one here, which was fired. <clears throat> they could have done this one here, which I call the green apple. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, and what I've started doing, I may have said this, uh, Dave Fellows, uh, where's Dave at? Is he gone? Well, anyway, he, well, he, he complained or, or I made a comment, I don't use the word complain, that my recesses uh, had kind of sharp edges on it. So I'm sitting there in my shop one day, three weeks ago, and I thought, well, how can I solve that? I don't want to go back and cut on those recesses. So I thought, I know, I'll fill it. So I, I took some, uh, I took some uh, uh, resin and mixed it up <coughs> and filled the recess. And you can make it in colors, uh, blue, green, whatever you want to accent this. And then I thought, well, the first one I did, it makes way too much. And, and that stuff's not cheap, it's expensive. So I had me some sand and I thought to myself, I tried that as an in, uh, inlay and that didn't like that at all. So I took the sand on the next one that I was going to do the back of, and, and I filled it with sand and took a piece of wood and just scraped it off, then got rid of all that excess. Then I took that piece that I had that sand in, turned it over uh, into a little bucket, then took that and put it into a cup. That told me how much I needed to fill that recess in. Uh, so then when I went and mixed my two parts of my resin, I only had to mix enough just to, to, to equal that distance that I had of the sand. And when I, when I got done pouring, I had just a little bit left over, so I didn't have a lot of waste. Uh, so, you know, that, that's, uh, that's a good thing. Okay, where were we? So I think the last slide is coming up. So let's get started. Okay. And that's where we left off yesterday. So what I need is I need I need a helper. I need somebody that was not here yesterday. Can we get the other TV? <coughs> the... My my youth. I opened the jaws and I said, "Okay, how big uh, is this?" See. And when I found out what it was. I made a little template for each side. That way, if I'm turning something, I don't have to sit there and try to remember. I just actually take and take my dividers, go to that, uh, then I can transfer that right directly to the piece I'm working on without having to think, well, what, what do I, how do I measure it now? Because at, at the beginning, that's what I had to do. I had to guess how big to make it. Okay. Thank you, sir. There we go. Where's my one inch? There it is. Okay, what I'm getting ready to do now is I'm getting ready. Now this, what I'm cutting right now is the uh, JB Weld. John, you don't know what you've got in. If you'll hold that, let me take that back piece off. <laughs> I will need another assistant. Right, Pat. What's your name, Tom? Somebody that was not here John, yesterday. John, didn't know what he got in. <laughs> Now let me just say this before y'all start. Let me say this before y'all start. If this blows up in your face, I don't know you. Dave Fellers told me to pick you two. Uh oh. Thanks, Dave. Anytime. We can find out where he lives. I know. I've been there. All right, if you'll just hold those two. Um, now, what I need to do real quick, 
I should have already done this, but I didn't. Uh, so I need to turn that round real quick. Uh, where's my glasses? You can go ahead. Now you're going to mix that for me, but you, you can't mix. mix it yet because I, we don't have. It's going to get. It's probably going to get hot right. before we do. I tell you what you can do. Come over here put some and. Water. I should put my apron on, but Generally wear my hood as well because uh, you know I got two eyes and I don't want to lose them. Uh, so I, you know I, I always I always try to wear the hood. I don't know why I didn't put it on now. I made my tendon, uh, I got carried away because uh, I'm a little nervous up here. So I had to put another tendon on there. Now, guys, if you can take that plastic off of those pieces, and uh, once you take the plastic off, you can start mixing that. Uh, make sure that metal tab on the end of it's gone too, and uh, you can start mixing. Are we going to put this inside the roller, or what we do? Uh, well, the putty you won't use yet. Say just squeeze them together? Yeah, just squeeze them together. Uh, fold them over, but you know, uh, Let's see. fold them over, roll them over, just get it fixed real good. That's the five minutes. It's not going to wash off in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to get the idea that we got gloves on. Right, little tiny gloves. Is that the five minutes? Five minute mixing? That's not five minutes. It's probably going to take just about maybe two or three minutes at the most. Okay. Uh, 
there's many products you can use to seal the wood or, or, or condition it. And what I like to use is I like to use shellac. I had not been using it. Uh, I'd use just a uh, regular sand and sealer. But it's environment, environment friendly. And uh, it, it just does a great job. Now I'm only going to go about an eighth of an inch deep just to give something to bond to. Uh, and what I like to do is I like to take shellac and it's over here somewhere. Let me because some of these products will have a tendency to bleed. Uh, when I when I use shellac, what I do is I take and I mix uh, one uh, two parts shellac to one part denatured alcohol. Shellac has got a shelf life. Uh, they they won't tell you that, but it does. I keep it in the refrigerator. Uh, I'll mix. I'll take and, and buy a quart uh, in quart cans. They sell it here, uh, and then I'll take and, and dump it into a plastic container with the lid. And I'll dump all that, and then I'll put a pint of uh, denatured alcohol uh, in there with it, mix it up, and then you know every time I need, I'm turning something, I'll pull it out, uh, stir it up, uh, put it on that piece, and then put it back in the refrigerator because uh, it does have a shelf life. Do you have a small refrigerator in your shop? I've got a full size refrigerator. My shop I built uh, 15 years ago after I had my heart attack. I uh, thought I was thought I was dying, and uh, my wife took me to the hospital, and she hit every bump in the highway, <laughs> and there was a deep one. I think she backed up and got it twice. <laughs> and when they when they got when she got me to Lexington, uh, I could not get out of the out of the truck a car. They had to come take me out. <coughs> and uh, then they the implanted a defibrillator and pacemaker in my chest. My pacemaker. Uh, my uh, the uh, pacemaker beats aids my heart. Uh, without the pacemaker, my heart will beat about 30 beats a minute, uh, which would be I'd be like a vegetable. But you know, I'm 69 years old, and you know what? I'm ready to go whenever he takes me. But until then, I'm gonna work hard. Uh, whether it's in the shop or whatever I do, I'm not, I'm not gonna live my life in fear of, well, what's, what's going to happen with this, or what's going to happen with that. My wife will tell me, she said, I'll come in sometimes, she says, <clears throat> you look like you wore a slam out. I said, well, I, when I die, I don't want to look beautiful, I want to look used. <laughs> and we got it mixed. Yes, sir. All right, let's have it. One, two. One, two, thank you. I want you to put it in that one. In that one right there. Yep, now I want you to thin it out, just push it around, Get you got to cover the whole thing. Now take your hand, put it around like this, and just make sure you get it on there good. Okay. All right, you're done. Next. So you're seeing how we're doing different colors on this. I'm mixing up wood putty and stuff like that. And it doesn't matter if it touches the other color, because we're going to cut it back. Now this, this uh, if we if we had a little bit longer, uh, this will this will set up in approximately about 45 minutes to an hour. This will set up where the epoxy putty uh, takes. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, the milli put will take about four hours to set up. We, yesterday, what we did is we did it in the morning. We did this first thing in the morning, and then after they got back from lunch, and we did a few things. Then some of them put them on their lathe and were able to cut them back uh, to create the, the look they were, you know, what, what it was going to look like. Tom. Huh? Let's see what you got. Okay, you got too much there, so let's just take some of this out. Let's take, let's take some of this out. You got, you got the plastic in there. 
I told you to take the plastic off. I thought you took it off. Oh, God, oh, no. no. Look at that. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> oh, my word. Oh. <laughs> what can you do? That's how we learn. <laughs> Thought you took the plastic off. No, I told y'all. I said, take the plastic off. <laughs> Sorry, I still love you. There you go. <laughs> Tom, do you have one that's hard? Enough? Pardon me? This one I never turned down or anything. If you want to use it. Yeah, I'm gonna, well, I've got that one or I've got one over here. I've got a All couple right. over here. Right. So that's what we do. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. All right. So that's what we do. Uh, and this is just to show you putting it on a piece like this. You can take cracks that you got in, in your uh, in a piece that you're working on. It, it needs to have a little depth to it. It needs to have about an eighth of an inch in depth. So you may have to take something and cut into it uh, to give it a little something to hold. You got to have something to bond to. You can't put it on surface scratches or real light areas. You got to put it in something that's got some depth where it can uh, stick to and hold. Uh, but when you do that, uh, again, you know any color that you want. Uh, of any powdered color that you might have, you can mix with this uh, to create an effect on that particular piece you've got. Uh, so now based on, on doing that, what we'll do is we'll pull that piece off. And uh, what did I do with it? Today, to an eighth of an inch thick, three quarters of an inch wide, because that's how big the, 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 the uh, space was that I made. And they flattened it out. Then they layered them on top of each other. One, two, three. So they were sitting on top of each other. Then you took a razor knife or you took a putty knife and you cut little segments off of it. Yeah. Uh, and then you take those little segments and you ended up putting it in there. Uh, and then and then at that point you could you get able to take and, and cut it off. Do you want to do yours or you want to take it home and do it? Well, you can do it. You well, let's have it. Demonstrate it here. Or take some of it off anyway. So, so he did this yesterday. Oh, wow, did you do that? No. <laughs> uh, he did this yesterday. He segmented. It's, it's kind of segmented is what it is. Uh, so, you know, you've got blue, you've got red, and then you've got the milliput. Uh, and this could be any color that you wanted to do. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll chuck this up. Now, I am going to put on my... Uh, face shield. I'm going to put on everything. <laughs> Yeah, because Pat made those. About uh, dust mask. I'm not going to put on a dust mask. Look, I'm 70. How long am I going to live? <laughs> yeah. Look, my wife already told me she didn't want me to use all of our retirement money up. She wanted to take trips when I died. Yeah. <laughs> she deserved it. She probably, don't, she probably does. She probably does. <laughs> Once the millie put sets up, I mean, it literally gets rock hard. I mean, real hard. I hope that one did. I know somebody said something, but I couldn't hear you. I said, I hope mine did. Be coming well, up. we'll see. If not, mine's in the car. You can do mine too. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody needs to do that. Oh, okay. Don't want his tools I made mean about 2,000. There you go. And you can stand that.
and then you, you can save it. Oh, it's so uh, and if you go up to about 600 grit, and I will take it off and pass it around, uh, this will be a gloss finish on, of its own. Uh, so the milliput will shine and be a gloss, uh, even beyond putting a uh, gloss finish on there. Uh, and he ended up putting uh, shellac <coughs> on there uh, before he put those products on there. So what we're about to do is we're about to do this okay. or this. Is, is that showing up? Yep. I could come. Uh, and all we'll do, and I've got, and what I've got is I've got Joe Solis, uh iridescent paint uh, in these little little bottles here, and I pour them into these Dixie cups, and I mix them, a, I mix a little flow medium with it. Uh, so to thin it, uh, so I just take a, a, a knitting thread, is all I'm using, and I take and I put it in here, and then you say the magic words, hocus pocus, no you don't say magic words, uh, what I do is I submerge it into the liquid, I mix the liquid up, so, and the thing about this is, uh, I don't care if it's red, gold, uh, blue or even uh, green iridescent when you look into the back of the thing can you, can you see inside it's That's all true. white they all look like they're white so you can there's no color difference in the in the little uh, cups uh, so generally what I do is I label them you know this is blue or green so I know what I'm dealing with because uh, it's all white until until the magic happens And when you see this, you're going to think, how simple is that? Tom even could do it. <laughs> so the way I start is uh, on my Nova, ch on my Nova uh, Chuck, uh, I have positions, one, two, three, and four. Okay? So I take and I turn it up. It doesn't matter. I want it vertical because I want the space to part evenly. So I put the number one position straight up. That way I, I, I can start dealing with that. So I take the string and through the magic of television I pick the string up. Now my string is probably too long. I use my little stick and I lay it down and I take it and I make parabolic curves. <coughs> I learned that big word a couple of weeks ago. <coughs> Sine wave. <laughs> so it looks like we got a mess going here, doesn't it? And then I just take and I pull it. And I pull it. And I pull it. <laughs> It'll take about 10 minutes for that to dry. If I had it on a flat surface, I'd have to wait for it to dry before I touched it. But since I have it on here and the jam chuck, I'm not turning the lathe on. I'm just spinning it by hand to the next position. Turn it the other way, Tom. Let's, let's oh, so they. Well, I wanted me to see it. Okay. So we'll turn it like that. So now I give me another piece of string. Tom, you need to write an article for uh, American Woodworker. What did he say? I needed what? You need to write an article for American Woodworker. I don't know that they let me do it. I'm not good enough yet. You're an artist. <laughs> Gary Lowe. Do y'all know Gary Lowe? Any know anybody about him? Uh, he 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 does, He's a demonstrator for. Uh, uh, Sorby, he, he, he demonstrates Sorby tools, uh, the uh, texturing tools, and I talked to him online, because I have him on Facebook, and I asked him, I said, Gary, I said, uh, have you ever had, a, when you look at your pieces, do you still find flaws with them? He said, yes, I do. 
and I felt good then. Because, I mean, I can look at any piece I've made, yep. and I can yep. say, nobody will buy that. It looks like a piece of junk. So I take the next color. And I don't even know what color this is, because it's white. And I use my little popsicle stick, and I lay it down. And you have to be patient. My wife asked me, how in the world can you ever do that? You have you are the least patient person in the world. Do you find that that string needs to absorb some of the paint, or does it matter? Oh, no, it doesn't matter. I mean, just put it right on in there. And then you just take and you, you have to pull it straight down, straight down. Have you tried different thicknesses? And then you have that. <laughs> Yeah, so and you turn it to. <laughs> I think my thing's moved a little bit. Let me put it right there. Okay, that's good. You know, I think I got enough yarn here on this to last me probably for a long time. And now I've got it messed up. You had a question back there. Yeah. What kind of paint are you, kind of paint are you using? Well, now? Yeah. Or the black? No. The, yes. Both. The black. What you're using? To, to, the iridescent. This is paint? iridescent paint by Joe Saunas, is what this is. Can you pass one around? Give me one of the yeah, bottles. Yeah, you can pass one of the around. They come in tubes or bottles? They come in bottles and tubes. They come both ways. The tubes are uh, a little smaller quantity. It's about $30, $30 roughly. Uh, the bottles are like 40 some, $45, $48 for all the colors. Uh, and, you know, I don't put much in this thing. There's not much in there because uh, I don't want to waste it. And when I get done, I'll take and pour what's left back into the bottle. Uh, <laughs> what do you say? How do you know what color it is? Because I take my popsicle stick and look at it, Smarty. <laughs> it, but see, I generally I marked I marked these little Dixie cups. I write on there blue, red, gold, whatever yeah. it is. And so I, you know, I have that, and my string's too long again. Tom, where did you find this procedure out? Pardon me? Where did you find out about this procedure? About this? Yeah. Online. Uh, on the on looking at either some of the some of the renowned bowl turners uh, ended up doing this. And I tried it for about four months with all kinds of different thread because they wouldn't tell me what kind of thread they were using. And I tried everything I could think of, and it just turned out like garbage. Well, one day I was at, I was at my favorite place, Walmart, and uh, I saw this thread here, and I, and I took it home. It felt right. I took it home. I sat there. I've got a unisaw in my shop, a Delta unisaw, a table saw, and it's a cast iron bed. And I sat right there at the cast iron bed on a stool just like this, and I got the string out, and I got the paints out, and I'm sitting there right on the tabletop, and I dip it in there and pull it out and lay it on and then do like that and pulled it, and I went, <laughs> you know, like deer in the headlights. I thought, I got it. Tom, does that, have a, does that thread have a number to it, size? What did he say? Does that knitting thread have a, a size. size number to it? Uh, you know, I'll find out what it is, if, uh, and then I'll get with Dave and let him tell you. Okay. I'll go by. I'll go by Walmart, and uh, and actually, I, I had the label and I got rid of it, but I'll, I'll get that information so that y'all can have it. Uh, and I apologize for not having it. But we just got started. We got some more good stuff here in just a minute. Yeah. 
Hey Tom. Yo. Well, what color did you color the, the base color there on that black? What is that? <laughs> your other friend. I, I went to uh, I went to my favorite store, which is Walmart. Walmart. That's right. And uh, I found some paint there, uh, aerosol paint that was black, and the price of the uh, black paint was ninety eight cent for the can. And uh, I tried some stuff at Lowe's. Uh, and it, it, it didn't do anything at all. It didn't do even close to what I wanted. I bought a can of this at 98 cents. I carried it home, sprayed my first piece, and fell in love. It dries fairly quick. Well, yesterday, I, I painted, while they were going to lunch, I painted 10 of them, uh, sanded them, painted them again, then put clear uh, top coat on it before they got back from lunch uh, and had them all done. Now, that was not professional quality because I was outside... You know, right there at the back door. Tom, mention the clear coat you use. What do you say? Clear mention. coat. What uh, clear coat do you use? Uh, I use the polyacrylic. It's a water base. Uh, and you can get that at, not, not Walmart, but Lowe's. Walmart does have it, but it's in a quart can. I like the aerosol. Again, that's just preference. Just a wiggle on there. <laughs> Quit shaking. Now none of these are going to be uniform with the other ones, but that's the intent. That's art. <laughs> that's the intent. Not reproduction. That'll take about 10 minutes to dry, uh, but we're not going to stop there. And so, let me make sure this is back far enough. <coughs> so there you have it. Four colors. And what I'll do after it dries is I'll put it I'll spray a couple of coats of the polyacrylic on there to seal that, uh, but this this stuff will dry, and I mean it, it's going it's going to pop when I when I put that on there. Uh, is my airbrush trick? I was, I do have an airbrush, and uh, I started using it uh, for this. I did not use the, the little reservoir. I was just using the airstream. Because I felt like it needed to be real light and uh, dainty. And uh, I was having trouble with the, uh, the the cord to it and the hose and all this, that, and the other. I was getting tangled up sitting there at my lathe. And so I, my air compressor had a line right there at my lathe. And I thought, well, let me try that. Maybe that'll work. Well, yesterday I tried the air uh, line here. And when I went, it, it, it set such a hair trigger that when you push it, it was full blast. Well, I brought mine, and here it just is coming out. So what I did, what I experimented, and, and Gary Lowe, I saw him do this, <coughs> is he just took it, and he put some up there. And he took his little air, and he went... Then he turned, turned it a little bit. He took some more of the same color. He turned it a little bit.
Uh, so anyway, I'm not done with that, but that kind of gives you an idea of just using an air compressor, what you can do. The string pull, but I saw this on the line, and it was multicolor. And I thought, well, how in the world can I do that? Uh, and make that make that look good. Well, I watched the lady, and this had nothing to do with bowl turning. This was just an art class online. Because uh, I'll sit there, I'm an avid, you know, when I get in the house at night about 8 o'clock, uh, we have our prayer time, then I go to my computer, and I start looking, and I start reading. Uh, well, I saw a lady take, and she took a piece of string, the same kind of string, and she laid it out on a piece of wax paper. Uh, she took some gold, and did about an inch of the string. She took some blue. She did, did about an inch of the string. She actually put it on there with a uh, with a brush, and she did four or five colors. Uh, then she picked the string up, which had the paint on it, and she went to something and she pulled it. And I went the same type of effect. And so I did that for myself to see if I could do it. And you see how you've created that. I've also taken and. Uh, I did this, where I had three string pulls, because I wanted to create something a little different uh, than what that was. And I made these boards for the guys yesterday. On that side, they had they had some of this, and on the back side, it was this for them to play with before they went on their uh, on their uh, uh, vase and, and started trying to put it on there. But I did. I wanted to just see what I could do if I did three string pulls, and that's what I did uh, in doing that. And so, at this point, that's the part of our thing. I've got one more thing to show you. I may even let you out early today, but don't count on it. Uh, where's the trash can? I generally wear my shield, and I should be wearing it now. Yeah. I'm going to walk in the house, and my wife's going to say, you smell like wood. Pretty slick. Come here, feel that. Yep, that's perfect. That's perfect. Okay. So I guess the first tool I'll use is going to be this one. Well, you know what? Maybe not. and I need to turn this thing down to okay let me see the tool out 500 revs see if I can set that okay and that comes with a couple of different bits okay and uh, thanks to David Fellows I've got stock in uh Brush tip markers. So what you what you end up doing with this is you, you keep the uh, uh, the neural on the outside. I'm still a little bit high. And you gently touch it.
and there's what you get. Uh, you know, you can actually take and tilt it some more. Almost sound like a chatter tool. And there's what you get. So now I'm going backwards from the spiral that I had before. Just a matter of, of, of changing the angle uh, of what you end up using. And then if you want to put a, a, another little decoration in between there, uh, just take and bring it straight on. And you see what you've got there with that red. Okay, now let's let's change the uh, let's change this up and and take that stuff off. Let me raise it up just a teeny bit. This particular wood uh, is uh, Bradford Pear, thanks to David Fellows telling me about a house across the street that lost some, uh, lost some wood. Uh, so the next thing we'll use is we'll use the ELF tool. Uh, it's got three <coughs> different color heads to it. So what I've done on my, on my uh, information, uh, on my bags that come with it, is I actually mark uh, what, what the speed should be. Because I'm not going to always remember. Uh, so I'll actually mark on there. So this has to run at 800 RPM. And that gives you a real fine detail. Let me find another color. Does that show up? And then I can take that same thing, leaving it at that same 800. Let me drop it down just a little bit. Because you want it about center is where you want it. And then I was playing with it, and then I'll try this. I thought, what can it hurt besides my hand? stand out. Let's put a little bit of this in there. And what color does yellow and blue make? Green. <laughs> what color is that? So you see what we've got there. And it's very fine details what it ends up giving you. Uh, and then I did it straight on. And the, and the bit's not spinning, but it's still cutting. As I told you before, the ELF tool will cut, uh, and that didn't really show up that well, uh, but it does cut a little groove in it. Uh, let's do one more thing.
You know, I did my cardinal sin. I didn't turn my speed down. Have you ever been guilty of that? <laughs> you know, I turn it up to to, to uh, put color on it, and I forget to turn it down. And I guess the way I recognize it is I heard it screaming at me. So for, you know, lids of boxes or the bottom of a turning, uh, you know, you can do something like that. Now, the next thing I want to show you uh, that I didn't show them yesterday, because uh, I like y'all more than I do the ones that were here yesterday, uh, is I want to show you one more thing. I want to clean that off. I've not always been this proficient. I've had chisels fly out of my hand. I've had things jump off the leg. Uh, you know, hit me side the head. And I'm still not where I want to be. Uh, you know, quite honestly, I'm still not. But now what I want to do is I want to take the elf tool again. Well, uh, yeah, I'll take this again. I want to show you one more. Speed down. Huh? Speed. Y'all got me nervous. <laughs> now, I'll go over here. These are at 500 reps. This is the Wagner tool. Uh, now that by itself doesn't look that impressive. What I, what I did is I took Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> I just want to see if she'd do it again. Is I take my skew and I come in here and I say, let's see what we got. We got to go up a little bit. Uh -huh. Yeah. So what, all I'm going to do is I want to detail that piece right there that I just put in there. And so the way I'm going to detail it is I'm going to come in here. My, uh, from cutting that milli put, this thing is dull. I mean, real dull. Let's see if this helps me any.
now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this product here and my paper towel. So I'm not putting dyes or any of that on there. Hell, I'll just do it like I do it at home. Uh, yep. It's actually called uh, metallic luster. It comes from Hobby Lobby. Uh, and what I found out, because I had something that got hard in the uh, in the case, and I started reading it. I actually read the instructions. <laughs> That's what my wife said. And uh, it said in the instructions. If it get if it gets hard, if it gets uh, where it's not workable, it said add a few drops of water to it. So I took it and I, I put some water in there. Actually, I put too much. Uh, and the next day I went back to it, and it was just as pliable as this. Now let's turn it off a minute. And this comes in, I, think, I guess, six or seven colors. And again, it's available at Hobby Lobby. They sell it for what? Uh, not rice, but, but is it in a wax, candles, or soap, or what? What, this? Yeah. What do they sell it for? I mean, what area are they using it in? Over in the paint section. It's over paint. in the paint section. Okay. And so what I ended up doing is I took this uh, metallic luster. I made this, I reckon this my my urn. Well, maybe not, hopefully it's not. But I made this, <laughs> and the inside of it is that is that wax, uh, and it just added a nice accent to it. Yeah. Uh, you know, to the product, and and what the finish is on it. Well, this is uh, Bradford Pear. And this right here is nothing but poplar. And, and I started out and it was a mistake, uh, this piece was. Because I had the lid like way up here. I carried it inside, my wife said. So I took it back out to the shop and I brought it down. I took it back in, she went. I took it back outside and I put uh, gold on the whole lid. You know, like the, the, the dome of the rock. Uh, and I carried it back inside, she went. So I thought, well, I want some gold on it somewhere. So I took it back out to the shop. Uh, and I ended up taking my skew and cutting right down to there. Because this is proud of this edge right here. Cut right down to there. made a line around. Then sculpted this. And, and uh, put this, uh, uh, this particular, this is turquoise. Uh, it's the water base by Folk Art. Uh, the the uh, turquoise dye. Put that on there and I carried it back inside. And she said, uh, so, so that ended up doing it. And then on the bottom, what I ended up doing, I don't know if that's showing or not, is I put, a, as many of you do, I put a little detail on the bottom just to add a little interest to it. Uh, you know, because everybody went, even, even uh, I carried something to my doctor, my heart doctor, carried a platter that I had made and gave it to him. And uh, he didn't reduce my bill, but I still gave it to him. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, the first thing he did, just like you do, is he took the plot and he looked at it and he went like that. Uh, and I did have something on the bottom of it. And what I do is I leave the inside of it natural just to show the wood that's in there, uh, to show that it is wood. Because somebody, somebody saw this online and he said, is it porcelain? And, uh, and I said, no, ma'am, it's not porcelain, it's wood. Uh, and I first didn't like it because the colors kind of contrast even though they're both the same and the thing that I, I want to mention is on different woods the same finish will look different in color and you can see that there looks like a difference in color but it's done with the very same finish uh, and so somebody said don't be upset just call it a design feature uh, and so that's what I'm doing on that uh, and with that being said sports fans Unless Tom, you got questions. Tom, do you, do you ever sign any of your pieces? Why? 
people would know I did it. <laughs> uh, I, well, I mean, I, I put a TH on the bottom and, and stuff like that, but uh, I'm not that good. No, no, I'm not, in, my, in my opinion, I look at a piece, I look at this piece right here, and, one, and somebody made a comment from Texas, uh, that looks like it ought to be in a museum. I said, yeah, I guess so, locked away in the basement. Because, uh, you know, I can look at it and I can see flaws in it and defects in it uh, that just, to me, are just, you know, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist when I'm, when I'm working on something, when I'm building a cabinet or a piece of furniture, I want it to look as flawless as possible. And I mean, I can see flaws in this, uh, but anyway, thank you for the viewing.